Um, this song seems like we could sing it a little bit quicker, but there's a line in the middle where the words are just jammed in there. So we'll start it out nice, easy pace, and hopefully it won't be too fast for when we sing, He's taken away all the burden of sin, the bloodstream from Calvary cleanses within. I'm saved, saved, saved. Number 70, number 70. I'm saved. Number 90, Christ for me. Yes, it's Christ for me. He's my Savior, my Lord, and King. Number 90. together as we open in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. And Father, we thank you for making salvation known to us and available to us. Father, we thank you for the church that you've given us. And we ask now that you would bless our service tonight. We pray that you'd fill Dr. Mitchell with your power as he preaches. We ask that you would speak to our hearts through your word, Father. We pray that we would be changed by it, that we would be more conformed to the image of your Son. We ask that you continue to bless our church, Father, that your hand would be upon it, that we would see uh, people in our community reached with the gospel, Father, and that we would uh, be able to see your will accomplished in this place. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's remain standing and take our hymnals now and turn to number 313. 313, trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to follow our Savior and King. Number 313.
364. You may be seated. Uh, the college choir is going to take off right as we get this started because they're going to sing for us after this song. But we'll sing Yield Not to Temptation for Yielding is Sin, number 364. I've enjoyed the music tonight so far, haven't you? Um, even just a yield not to temptation. Uh, 
fight manfully onward, uh, dark passions subdue, and uh, Lord, help us with those things. And that, that opening song, I'm saved, saved, that was, that was really good. Uh, a little, little tricky to kind of flow through all those words, but a lot of fun. And, and then the college choir, uh, tenors, uh, you did good. You had those high parts and kept it mellow, not tenor uh, yelling and screaming up there. Um, that, that sounded really nice. You all blended well. Um, that's, a, that's a blessing. And we're not done yet. We still have some music. Yeah, I see something down here. So that's probably something later on that we have to look forward to. So what a fun evening. All right. Well, let's get to some announcements. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we had said there will be a nursery meeting tonight, and there will not be. We'll move that to next Sunday night. Uh, Wednesday, late morning, jolly 60s. Thursday, uh, our, our PTF, Parent Teacher Fellowship. Oh, that workers meeting at 6.45, and there will be King's Kids and Flyers that night. And uh, Friday will be our uh, RU Recovery at 7 p.m. A couple weeks from today, Easter Sunday, uh, and then we have that, the, the, the special service at 10.30, and the evening service will be at that normal time. All right, we'll have the ushers uh, come, and, and uh, Jake, if you would, you wore that red tie, I had to ask you to come. You just... Uh, I looked out, you know, zeroed in right there. So if you'll come and ask for his blessing on the offering tonight. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful evening that we can come together and we can uh, learn from your word. I pray that you would bless this offering as we take it up and that we'd have a good evening tonight. I pray these things in your name. Amen.
finally got to do what they really like to do, <laughs> play really loud. All right, because the organ is so big, we could just play as loud as we wanted to. <laughs> Amen. And what a great theme to talk, of, to sing about, to play about, our risen Lord, the King of Kings. Let's uh, take our hymnals and turn in them and turn to number 280, 280, dying with Jesus by death, reckon mine, living with Jesus, a new life divine. We'll stand as we sing 280, moment by moment.
understanding gives us tremendous peace. Let's th sing about that as we turn to 287, just one or two pages over. Like a river glorious, it's God's perfect peace.
Oh, what fun tonight's been so far. Uh, let's turn to uh, Proverbs 29 tonight. Proverbs 29. Going to preach a message. Uh, a child left to himself. A child left to himself. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. A child left to himself. Uh, it's, it's a painful thing. I, I, I jumped on the computer. I was, I was putting on, I put in there just uh, abandoned children throughout the world. Millions of orphaned or otherwise abandoned children, parents that just drop off their kids or just... Um, or, or they're orphaned. Uh, um, it, was, it was painful. Abandoned children throughout the world. Uh, so many on their own. Uh, and then it, it gets pretty uh, stomach turning. Uh, they're, 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 they soon find themselves trafficked and abused. Uh, it just, it sickened me to talk or, or to read about it. But, but you know, the Bible talks about a different kind of abandonment here. Uh, a parents who, who will leave their child to themselves right in your very home. Right in your very home. There's an abandonment going on right in our homes. It's a different kind, but, but it brings shame and it's painful and, it's, and it doesn't have to be that way. Proverbs 29, 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth on an ongoing basis, his mother to shame. Um, let's pray and we'll look at these things. Lord, we ask that you'd help us as we look at these things to, to, to learn a lesson, Lord, and, and to, to be warned. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd help me, Lord, to say the right things and have the right tone, uh, uh, to be a spokesperson, uh, 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 in, uh, a mouthpiece, Lord, for you, and, and to say the things only that you'd want me to say. And I'd ask these things in Christ's name, amen. Now we... We have a lot of pride, so let's, let's set the pride aside tonight because uh, we'll talk about a child left to himself and you're like, ah, I, I figured that was going on in that home and over there and over there and there and there. And no, 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 it's not. This isn't about everyone else's home tonight. This is about yours and mine, okay? So uh, you, you say, oh, yep, see, there's, there's an issue over uh, I'm not saying that, yep, oh, okay, I can, I have... No, I'm, I'm not handing out clubs tonight so that you can take it to everyone. <laughs> Preacher gave me a, plug, a club to smash over your head. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. It's for you to take these truths and to say, oh, God, help me with these things. College guy, help me uh, for down the road when I have a, a, a wife and and children, uh, if the Lord grants me those wonderful things. College girl, Lord, uh, Lord help me with these things. Church member, uh, 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 not to be looking around. I'm not handing out clubs. I want you and me. I still need these truths for my home. All right? So uh, each one of us looking to ourselves, a child left to himself. I, I want to... I want to give the characteristics uh, so that the Bible says that this leaving to themselves will bring their mother shame. And so I want to look at some characteristics of that shame. I want to kind of look at the, uh, uh, kind of explore the cause of that shame. And, and then I want to look at the cure for that shame. So the characteristics of this shame, uh, what, what might it look like? Uh, and so uh, you're, we're looking at our own homes. Uh, boy, when you leave the child to themselves, pretty soon the child is ruling the home instead of the parents. Uh, listen, dad, mom, uh, either you're in charge or, or you won't, or, or you're not. Uh, left to themselves, the child is at liberty to do the things he wants instead of what mom and, and dad want. Uh, we wouldn't want a five-year-old running the country. You're like, well. (laughs) 
but it sure looks like some five-year-olds are running some homes. It's not supposed to be that way. Child ruling the home instead of the parents. Uh, another characteristic that the, the parent-child relationship is miserable. Um, parents that are moms, th they drive me nuts, and I know I drive them nuts. It's awful. It's awful. The Bible says, uh, Proverbs 29, 17, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. He shall give delight unto thy soul. God doesn't want a miserable parent-child relationship. Um, so don't leave your child to themselves. Uh, another thing, no respect for parents. Uh, uh, massive amounts of, of time wasted with quarreling or, or arguing. And then the shame, the shame of being disregarded by your own child. Having others watch your children disregard you. And by the way, you say, well, that's embarrassing. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punish them uh, because they embarrass me. You don't punish them because they embarrass you. You punish them when they do wrong. But if you don't punish them, they will embarrass you. Child left to himself bringing this mother shame. Well, you know, I, I, let, them, I let them throw their fits at home. Um, you know, they, they need to express themselves. But, but then... Uh, I don't know, my, my self-respect kicks in a little bit when I'm out in public, and I, and I kind of wish then that I had some control over them. Well, you got to have control at the house. That's where it starts. And, and again, you're like, well, I, I can't go out in public. Can't go, you know, uh, no restaurants. Uh, get, a, get a baby. But again, you grab that babysitter and you go out and you're unkind to the babysitter. You leave them unruly children. You, you go back and, and, and her eyes are crossed, you know, when you finally untie her. <laughs> but at home they scream uh, when they don't get their way. And, and that's fine. No, it's not fine at your home. That's where you get control of it. Amen. And by the way, unchecked selfishness becomes more disastrous with age. Maybe they go to school and, and they get in trouble and, and your first thought is, those teachers don't have the people management skills that I have. And in some cases, it's those teachers aren't the pushover you are. I'm not saying every time. But in some cases, that's what's going on. Some people aren't doing their job at their home and then that's the teacher that just lacks the people management skills. No, it's the teacher that's, that's going to say, hey, that's wrong, you can't do that. And they're waiting for the, the begging and the pleading and the counting and the. Sometimes there's a shame of immorality. Undisciplined children sometimes get out there and they mess around in immoral ways before marriage. That brings shame, not just to your home, but to another home that they've been messing around with. Drunkenness and drugs. Man, we love King David, don't we? Oh, isn't it so fun to go to the book of Psalms? The sweet psalmist of Israel. Oh, there's some wonderful things about David. Oh, there, there's some wonderful passages where, where there was beautiful times of repentance. But it seems like as a dad, he left his children to themselves too much. We think of Amnon who... Who, who brought that shame upon their home when he defiled his half-sister. And, and, and what do we see David doing? He, he got upset, and that's just, that's it. That's it. And you say, well, I just, uh, I don't want to rock the boat. You need to rock the boat in your home. I don't want to cross him. Uh, more on that later. <laughs> It gets confusing, doesn't it? A child left to himself. Uh, maybe you do have that child that's trying to do right in your home. I'm going to try to do the right thing. And, and then over here, the, oh, but I want, ah, ah. okay, okay. And the other child is like, what in the world? Why, why, the, the, the whiner here is running our home. 
The only way I'm going to get some attention is if I start to whine and, and fall down and kick and scream. Uh, uh, the, oh, the, the squeaky wheel is the only one that gets the grease here. Training the other children, they got to pitch a fit to get anywhere. Boy, uh, the child that thinks that he, it's his right to have his way, what kind of, a, what kind of friends is he going to enjoy in life? What kind of meaningful employment is he going to have? Listen, son, if the boss ever it crosses you, explain that you're not, used to, uh, you're not used to that and he needs to do the adjusting to you like mommy and daddy always have. It's not going to go well at his job, isn't it, Brother Hume? The child that's selfish is going to have an awful marriage. Ask somebody that has a happy marriage how much self-denial is involved. Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about that when they're little. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll, they'll pick that up somewhere along. No, that's, you're the one that makes sure they pick that up. Oh, you're going to have a good marriage? There's going to be some give and take. They never learn that. Marriage is going to be hard. Hard on, hard on the teachers at school. That spirit of, go ahead, send me to the principal's office, see if I care. That's hard on teachers. What about grandparents? They're like, hey mom, hey dad, you want to keep my kids? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Say, like, come on, what's that face you're making? <laughs> well, they're a bit unruly and obnoxious and defiant, but besides that, Ah, uh, parents, get a hold of that stuff. Don't leave them to themselves. Don't let them act the way they want to act and do what they want to do. Get on top of that early. Uh, I, it, it was nice talking to police officers years ago that said, oh, we like Fairhaven. We like Fairhaven. It's not their kids we're picking up in the night. We like Fairhaven. I like hearing that. I really like hearing that. The characteristics of the shame. Uh, secondly, the cause of the shame. It, it says here, uh, a, a child left to himself. Left to himself. Uh, well, you know, he, I, I'm, I'm going to let him do what he wants. I'm going to give them all the distance they want. I'm going to give them the space that they want. Uh, a, a couple years ago, I, I remember hearing of a teenager that was saying, my, my parents don't know where I am half the time. Spoken by someone who, who not long after was found to be sneaking around and doing wrong things. It doesn't usually go the other way, does it? I, I sneak off and pick up the excess garbage around the dumpster and throw it in there. Sneak away and pull some weeds and wash some windows. Ah. <sighs> One area that, that, that Christianity, we're, we're leaving our kids to themselves is with those cell phones. It's huge. Uh, I just sent home a letter to the, 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 the parents um, yesterday on the, on, on the, the, the cell phone. And, and listen, parents, I, I need you to take it oh so seriously. In the bottom of that letter, there's a link to, to a lesson that Pastor Armacost gave just up here years, some years ago. Um, please watch it. Please take notes. Please make decisions. Please enact those decisions. Uh, I think two, three weeks ago, Brother Joel Porzinski preached uh, in, in chapel down there on, on technology. It was part two. Uh, please watch it. Dad and mom, take notes. Make decisions. Enact those decisions. And it has to be you. Our kids don't understand the danger. And they will want to fight you on it. Uh, young person, don't fight your parents. Let them protect you. And parents, love your kids enough that when they fight you on it, you're going to see it through. Parents, be aware of every song they're listening to. Don't leave them to themselves or there will be shame. Be aware of every person they're interacting with. Who are those friends? Don't leave them to themselves or there will be shame. 
Be aware of what videos they're watching. Don't leave them to themselves or there will be shame. Be aware of those influencers that they're, they're listening to. Don't leave them to themselves or there will be shame. Those influencers out there, this woke Christianity that's out there, seems like there's kids growing up in, in, in semi-decent churches and, and, and they, they turn their back on God, jump into the world, and then discover there's a brand of Christianity out there that by means of a heretical definition of grace allow them to be as heathen as the day is long. And yet they can post devotionals on the internet talking about how they've never been so close to God. And they feel so badly for those legalistic people in those hard churches who think that those things matter to God. You know, I mean, I... Mean, I I dress like I don't know God, but he doesn't care. He still loves me. Come to this church where you matter. No, stay in a church where God matters. By the way, when you're in a church where God matters, you discover in that context how much you really do matter. And it's not you matter instead of God. It's you matter because of God, and you never understand how much you actually do matter until you understand how much He matters. That comes first. And then the cure for this shame. The Bible says that there's a wisdom that comes with the rod and reproof. The rod and reproof give wisdom. God tells us uh, with the rod we drive foolishness from their hearts. Uh, Proverbs twenty two fifteen. foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Drive it. Let that word sink in. It will drive it far from him. It's not, yeah, I tried that once and it didn't work. <laughs> it's an ongoing thing. Think of a cattle drive. When, when the cowboys want to get out there and, and drive the cattle, do they go out to a cow and, psh, oh, it's not working. I want, the, I want you all to go that way. I tried. It didn't work. Uh, what I'll do is I'll talk to them. I'll, talk, I'll, I'll convince them with my superior reasoning skills. Oh, no. Drive it far from him. Foolishness is bound in the heart of the child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him takes effort. It doesn't say timeouts will drive it far from him or pestering. For a cattle drive, uh, there's a persistent effort behind the herd to get them moving in the right direction and then keep them moving in the right direction. Boy, uh, beware the, I'm really good at persuading. Um, that's for people without talking skills like me. I'm able to talk with my children, so I do that instead. I'll just verbally convince them of the superiority of my line of thinking. <laughs> that, that my way of, uh, uh, that, that they'll see my way of seeing it as best. No, after a while, that, that turns into nagging and scolding and pestering and berating and cajoling and begging and pleading and shouting. Parent, do the merciful thing and paddle them. One, two, two and a half, two and three quarters, two and four fifths, two and five sixths, two and six sevenths, two and seven eighths, two and eight ninths. Some time elapses and two and nine hundred and eighty nine. 990th, I'm warning you. Parents, sometimes we're training them, we're literally training them not to obey right away. Sometimes we are a big part of the problem. As sin is the problem, but we're not helping them with it when we 
train a different way than the Bible says. By the way, those, those I just talk, you know, sometimes that turns into harsh words. And harsh words can be more damaging. Did you know that? The sting of a paddle will soon go away, but, but words uttered from a heart of frustration, those can leave a long-lasting hurt. Someone said, no matter what the latest child-rearing philosophy or fad is, children arrive in this world with a, a, a fallen human nature. They, they're, 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 they inherit a nature that will at times behave selfishly, rebel, become angry, commit a host of other mischievous and sometimes harmful acts. Remember, the foolishness is bound in their heart. Of course, the older the child, the more serious the behavior. Only discipline can unbind children from their foolishness and make room in their hearts for wisdom. Can I say that last part again? Only discipline can unbind children from their foolishness and make room in their hearts for wisdom. I got good things to tell my kid. I, I think you, you probably do have some decent things, but they're not going to listen. If their heart is full of foolishness, there's no room in their, in their heart for the wisdom that you have for them. Get that foolishness out. Make room for that wisdom you want to impart to them. The rod and reproof refers to paddling. Reproof, uh, there, now there is verbal correction. It's not enough to in, instruct our children wisdom and, and only verbally correct them when they err. Our, our, our teaching must be accompanied by physical discipline. Children do have an innate, uh, they do not have an, an innate desire to do right. Therefore, they must learn from uh, uh, paddling that disobedient and sinful behavior results in punishment. If we spare the rod, we will experience the stabbing pain and humiliation of rearing unwise and foolish children. A wise parent will use paddling the right way, always, always under control, lovingly, but plenty firm. Use paddling as, as a tool to teach children to uh, avoid disobedient, that is lawless, sinful and harmful behavior. It is a sin to, to hate your child while you paddle, but the Bible says you hate them if you don't paddle. Proverbs 13, 24. So paddle and do it correctly. This is the unmistakable teaching of God himself. By the way, pain gets our attention. <laughs> a while ago, I had this painful, painful flare-up in my big toe. And uh, I'm like, oh, I couldn't, it was keeping me up at night. It was as painful as could be. I would, I would take as much pain medicine as I could. I'd go to sleep. It would wake me up in the night when the pain medicine wore off. Oh, it was painful. And uh, that pain got my attention. I started doing some research to figure out uh, what it was, and, and I did some reading, and I, and I thought, I think it's connected to my diet. I thought to myself, I, I should probably consider changing some things. But I like those things, so I probably won't. <laughs> the pain came back even worse. This time, instead of, I might, no, I changed my diet right away. There was no considering it. The pain was super convincing. And the pain went away. Uh, but then after the pain went away, so too did the dietary changes. The pain came back. I quickly changed my diet again. And the pain went away. And to this day, my kids will tell you, every day my diet is affected. Pain convinced me of what I would not have changed otherwise. So why, why does the Bible say to, to paddle? Well, well, just because God says so, that's enough. But pain really is a powerful attention getter. 
I've praised God for a mom and dad who lovingly paddled me. So when they gave me an instruction, <laughs> I, I just, I, it just cracks me up to even imagine this. My mom giving me something, telling me to do something. And I'm like, I will take that under advisement. Never came from these lips. <laughs> or, I'll consider those things that seem to matter to you. Or, I can see that, that you want me to change those things, but I like those things. And therefore, I have solid reasoning in my own mind for keeping them in my life. Like the cell phone from earlier. <laughs> Your kids aren't going to see the danger. You're going to have to see it for them. And they're going to have to trust you. You're going to have to stand firm on that. No, my, my parents paddled me. So when they told me to do something, yep, I'm going to do that because I have a healthy instinct called self-preservation. <laughs> and it's nice when it grows to, I'm going to do that because I love you and because that's what God wants. But it doesn't start there. It grows to that. It doesn't start there. The Bible says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Uh, that's Proverbs 13, 24. But, but God, is God the ultimate example? Yes. Hebrews 12, 6 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son. scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. You will never have a better idea than God. Ever. Doesn't matter how many likes or followers that social media influencer has for this other way of living. They're wrong. Back to David. In, in uh, 1 Kings 1 there, uh, verse, verses 5 and 6, the Bible says, uh, Then Adonijah, Adonijah was, was Dave, King David's son. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself. Ooh, the Bible has something to say about that. Um, it would have been nice if he would have learned that at, at home. Um, but, and I don't know everything about David's home, but, but, but some of the things we, we saw in the Bible gives us a hint about what's going on. Um, then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself. Um, boy, we know the Bible says in Matthew 23, 12, Whosoever will exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Boy, uh, Adonijah didn't seem to have learned this lesson. By the way, it's way better when they can and learn it when they're young. Because Adonijah was going to learn this lesson the hard way. Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. He prepared him chariots and horsemen, just like his brother Absalom did. Seemed like it, uh, it seemed really good. I mean, the end was awful for Absalom. <laughs> but sometimes we don't really think through, you know, the whole situation, just part of the story that we liked. That's what he did. I'm going to do the same thing. Prepared him chariots and horsemen. This is toward the end of, well, dad is old and dad is weak and I don't think dad can do anything about it right now, so I'm going to. And 50 men to run before him. And this verse right here, verse 6. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, why hast thou done so? His father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? The Bible seems to be saying here that dad refused to rock the boat. Guess what happens to Adonijah in just a little bit? Solomon has him put to death.
listen, parents, we got to be in their business. We can't leave them to themselves. There will be some battles. It will displease them, right? The Bible says that neither did they displease him by asking, hey, what's going on? That displeases me. Good. Answer my question. But let's love them enough to have all the battles we need, but have them early, as early as you possibly can, so that life doesn't become one giant battle ending poorly. Some time ago, um, there was a, 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 a family here for, uh, for a preaching conference, and, and, and the daughter was there with her dad, and she goes, Pastor Mitchell, I, I have a blog. W would you write something for my blog? And I'm like, I guess so. You know, I, I, I just twiddle my thumbs most of the time anyway. So yeah, <laughs> we'll consider that. It took me a while, but, but finally I sat down and, and, and put some stuff together and, and emailed it to her to, to put on her blog. And it was this little, it was this little article, a tiny article I, I wrote, and, and uh, I'll just read it to you right now. The article was entitled, Aren't Relationships Built on Trust? So in my article, uh, some time ago I... I heard a preacher tell his audience that parents should know what their kids are doing and who they are doing it with. In addition, parents should really limit what their kids can do on a smartphone and should be entirely in control of what is being done. What do you think? Was that pastor right or wrong? Boy, in, in this day and age, that type of preaching isn't very welcome. Young people are tempted to argue with this type of reasoning with responses like, our parents get into our business too much and it's not right. After all, aren't relationships built on trust? They just need to trust us. Or, my parents don't need to know what I'm up to, they should just trust me. To a younger set of ears, comments like these may sound good at first, but what does the Bible say? Proverbs 29, 15. A child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Parents are warned in the book of wisdom, Proverbs, that in general... There will be shame brought on them if they are in the habit of giving too much space to their kids. God tells parents that the kids should not be left to themselves. What a youngster may attempt to call trust is often just the child being left to themselves. This doesn't bring about good results. It brings shame. So young people, don't fight with your parents wanting to be part of your business. Enjoy it. They love you. And don't listen to what this world, or even possibly your own deceitful heart, has to say about how important it is for you to be left to yourself. Instead of you trying to explain to your parents what trust is, Maybe you should just trust them more and let them do the job God has given to them. So are relationships built on trust? Sure. But the question is, who should do the trusting? Young person, you do the trusting. Trust God that he knew what he was doing when he gave you your parents. He's never made a mistake. And he never will. Again, this is for us. I don't mean for you to look at, yep, oh, see, see. No, no, no. This isn't a club for you to go after other people in the church. This is for you to say, Lord, help me in my home. And then, Lord, as if, a, if as an older person, if somebody comes to you, uh, hey, 
I, I, I can talk to you. I can be a help. I don't want us going around clubbing each other. Again, like I said before, I want us going around loving each other, praying for each other, and then not messing around. Let's be serious in our homes with these things. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that, that you'd help us as a church. Lord, help us to, to continue coming together. Uh, Lord, this church family, loving each other, supporting each other. Uh, Lord, help us uh, not to say, well, you need more grace toward me as I ignore these truths in God. Ah, Lord, help us, deliver us from that. Help each one of us, yes, to be extending grace to one another. But Lord, help us to be looking to you and being serious about these things. Lord, we do care about our young people. I pray that you'd help them to have a trust. And Lord, help parents to limit the attention they're able to give to the world when they hear all these, uh, to a young mind. The world sounds so appealing in this woke Christianity that's out there. Oh, it, it makes so much sense to the young mind. Oh, God, help us to limit what they can hear of the foolishness and maximize what they can hear of the truth. Help us to be in their business and help our young people to value the parents that you've given them and ultimately to trust you, God. You're the one that's doing the work in their life, using those parents. Help us, oh, God, as a church to be looking to you. Uh, help us to of a humility and that right type of grace toward the rest of our church family. Help us, Lord. Help us in the area, Lord. What a treasure our young people are. And even now, Lord, when we deal with our young people, they don't have children yet, but what we do in their lives affects the children that they will have. And then likely the children that they will have. Oh, Lord, it's difficult sometimes to, to, to rock the boat and cross them and have those, those battles strategically. But, oh, Lord, the dividends down the road from putting the effort in to make sure we're not doing the easy thing and letting our children be left to themselves. But we're putting in that effort to be right there. Correcting and reproving loving them. Lord, help us to lovingly get that foolishness out of their hearts to make plenty of room for the wisdom that you have for them. Oh God, thank you for my parents. I thank you for parents who, who paddled me. And there was plenty of foolishness in this, in this heart. Thank you for parents who paddled me. Lord, help us to be faithful and obedient to you. We ask all these things in Christ's precious name, amen.